Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. We're asking for order because we, we're going to want to start the college here. The college consists of the following format. We have a brief announcement period, followed by our speaker who will speak for upwards to an hour or so. Then we have our question and answer period where we ask that you have questions, you keep questions. And then at the end, we have our infamous rebuttal period where you can speak on or off the subject, generally give you four to five minutes to uh, do your rebuttal. I personally ask that you keep them coaching coherent, but that's not always the case. I will reiterate that there are only two rules at the College of Complexes, and I think most of us know these. First is one fool at a time, and the second is no personal attacks. And, all right. The time of Philosopher Kings is already here. On February 23rd, 2018, the International Logic was founded, beginning a new era of politics. The IOP is an international party structured around a web-based algorithm that rewards transparency, thoughtfulness, and participation. The IOP itself has no central ideology and no specific political goals. Thus, it is inclusive from anyone from anywhere in the world. Indeed, the IOP has the capacity of organizing like-minded people around common goals of expo exposing ideas to easy critique and removing all special interests and and removing all special interest money from college. The international lo logic party is what Plato has dreamed of, a democracy guided by reason. Let's welcome our speaker with a rousing round of applause. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cesare Ulevich, but you can call me Caesar. And just to give you a little background about myself, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies from Northeastern Illinois University uh, with three minors in music, philosophy, and economics. Uh, besides that, for many years I've been independently writing philosophy as well as doing animal rights activism. This is only my second time being at the College of Complexes uh, meeting and, and my first time presenting. So thank you very much for having me. Tonight I will be discussing with you a new political party that was founded less than three months ago on February 23rd, the International Logic Party. Uh, also I will be discussing IGORA, uh, the system around which the party is structured, uh, the stage of development of both the party and IGORA, and my estimation of what the future will look like for us. At the end of my presentation, I will be happy to answer your questions, hear your rebuttals, and give my closing statement. And before I continue, uh, I just want to point out one interesting fact, that the format of the International Logic Party uh, meetings is very similar to the format used by the College of Complexes. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. We could almost even consider this session here to be an International Logic Party meeting, yes. except that uh, none of you, besides myself, are official members. Uh, this meeting wasn't officially scheduled, and in a real meeting we would have more time dedicated to discussion. Uh, but the point of interest is that this similarity is uh, not by reproduction, by, but by independent parallel design. So being participants of the college and presumably supporters of its format, I hope that knowing this fact uh, will function for you as a proof of concept and uh, that at least in part the International Logic Party will already have your approval. Now let's begin with the title theme of this presentation. Uh, the ideal philosopher kings. First of all, I am not a Plato scholar, and I will admit that as many uh, philosophy classes uh, as I've taken, I've always been bored and irritated by most philosophy texts. Uh, the biggest exception to that being logic textbooks. To me, for formal logic has always been fun, just like math. Am I right? Yeah. Any math fans? Okay. So uh, this will not be a detailed discussion of Plato's Republic. 
uh, but I've always been fascinated and influenced and inspired by the idea of philosophers being the rulers in a society. Um, and primarily, uh, well, undeniably, that, uh, that interest is narcissistic to some extent, uh, being a philosopher myself. Um, but uh, philosophers are fundamentally skeptics. So when we see a non-philosopher grab for power, we cannot help but think, shouldn't these arrogant fools do some philosophy first uh, so that they know what to do with power once they have it? But to give those of you without a philosophy background a basic idea, uh, in the Republic, Plato essentially claims that the way to achieve the highest level of justice in a society is either for kings to become philosophers or for philosophers to become kings. Of course, it should be obvious that kings have no interest in becoming philosophers. But the people who already have power will not later turn to wisdom uh, because they can just create their own wisdom and surround themselves with it. Uh, maybe that's what they mean by power corrupting people if you're not a philosopher. But philosophers can become kings, especially if the public democratically wants them to take that job. Superficially, the idea makes sense that the people who dedicate their life to understanding the big picture of life should get to make the big decisions. However, there are many different philosophies and many different visions of how those philosophies should be implemented. So we can easily see why the time of philosopher kings hadn't come to pass for so long. To be fair, here and there throughout history, there have been kings who uh, arguably were also philosophers. But there was no continuous and dependable philosopher-king succession um, in a diverse but collaborative philosophical culture. Consequently, both philosophers and non-philosophers are not very happy with the level of injustice in our society or in the rest of the world. However, this lack of recorded success does not mean that this idea is impossible. In fact, I'm here to prove to you that it is possible because it is already the case. Except it is such, at such an early stage that most people don't know about it yet. Uh, today I'm going to explain and discuss with you the International Logic Party, a political party that is actually capable of realizing Plato's vision, at least uh, in some sense. The International Logic Party is led by philosophers. It is fundamentally democratic with everyone sharing in power. It actually makes people more philosophical. It is capable of tr creating truly uh, logical politics, and thus it is capable, capable of achieving the highest level of justice possible for society and the world. The International Logic Party is the fulfillment of Plato's dream that he tried to relay in the Republic. So let's start with the fundamentals. The International Logic Party is unlike any political party ever before because it does not have a platform of policies or issues. Instead, we have three simple principles. The first principle is that we should always be open to examining any one of our own ideas, especially if we intend to run, uh, if we intend to hold public office. The second principle is that the best way to examine our ideas is to make them as transparent as possible to ourselves and to others. The third principle is that no candidate running a campaign for the party nomination or for any public office with the party nomination may accept any funding towards their campaign from anyone except the party. Any donations accepted by the candidate from outside sources may only be used to promote the party itself. Therefore, if you agree with these three principles, you can already consider yourself an unofficial member of the International Logic Party. There's another major way in which our party is unlike any other political party. Our primary goal is not to help elect candidates that support our platform, again, mainly because we do not have a specific platform. Instead, our primary goal uh, <coughs> is to promote logical thinking and logical ideas within the party ranks and the general electorate. Our secondary goal is to nominate and help elect the public offices party members. With that said, and the fact that you can belong to the International Logic Party while belonging to any other political party, Democratic, Republican, Communist, or Fascist, or whatever, 
I want to point out that it is theoretically possible for the International Logic Party to completely change the political scheme without ever having a single one of its candidates elected to public office. I'll explain how that could happen towards the end, uh, but realistically, we will definitely be winning public offices. Okay, but here's the trillion dollar question. How do these principles and goals get implemented? The answer to this lies in the algorithm and networking system used by the International Logic Party, which is called IGORA. Uh, by the way, IGORA is a contraction of electronic and agora, where agora was the name of an ancient Greek public space and market. So what is the agora? IGORA requires an extensive explanation because of the system with several very important <coughs> functions. First of all, our IGORA is still under constru construction. But when it is completed, it will be an online, interactive, political networking platform that will be something like the hybrid of Meetup, Reddit, Coinbase, and Facebook. That said, I think the best way to explain it is to describe the step-by-step -step process, how a user will interface with the system. The first step will be for the user to create their personal profile with some biological, uh, bi I'm sorry, biographical information not all that different from a profile on other platforms. Um, I thought there would have been handouts yeah. that would have been available to you. Is that correct? You guys have those at the table? Okay, great. The second step will be much more important. The second step is the user creating their ideological profile, which is something unique to the system. Actually, calling it the second step might be a bit misleading uh, because it is an ongoing process uh, continuously ongoing process that the user will always come back to as their ideas change or develop. You'll see what I mean. Uh, the, now, the ideological profile is a very specific concept. It is a listing of all of your ideas ranging from, ranging from the most fundamental observations and theories about life and existence through your system of ethics and justice down to the most practical applications of these ideas and laws and issues. The system incentivized, incentivizes this behavior because it allows you to put in 23 different ideas, rating, rating them at, a point, uh, at point values ranging from 23 points to one point. To put it another way, to reach an agreement with the greatest number of people, you will rank, your most, uh, you will rank most highly your most fundamental ideas and worry about promoting the rest of your ideas later once you've reached the common ground with other people at the more fundamental levels. <coughs> this concept of the ideological profile already has some important benefits. First, it forces you to make sure that all of your ideas are actually consistent with one another. All people have all kinds of ideas, uh, and very often these, are, these ideas are in contradiction with one another. This is because uh, people typically don't consider all of their ideas at the same time in relation to one another. Uh, so for example, and this is just a simple hypothetical, these are not my ideas. If your first I idea is that God exists, God is good and wants everyone to be happy, and then your, sec uh, your second idea is that Jesus of Nazareth said, love thy neighbor, and then your 20th idea is we have to build a wall to stop Mexicans from uh, finding better opportunities here. You're able to see uh, that your idea about the wall and stopping Mexicans is not very consistent with your other two ideas. So basically, this system forces you to see or smell your own bullshit. Let's say that you're still incapable of... Let's say that you're still incapable of seeing your own contradictions. The second benefit is that the ideological profile allows other people to identify your contradictions and to more effectively call you out on them. And this is a, a different, uh, and this is different than just arguing with people about how bad of an idea building a wall with Mexico might be. It is an argument based on whether someone's practical ideas are in line with their fundamental ideas. Another advantage of the ideological profile is that it allows you to identify arguments which are not worth having and to avoid them. Perhaps someone else is an atheist and they, they don't care about Jesus of Nazareth, but for whatever reason they don't like Mexicans. These people are able to look at the person in the previous example and say, I don't want to waste time discussing God or Jesus, but let's work together to build that stupid wall. So the point is that the ideological profile is a tremendous learning tool, both for people individually and humanity as a whole. 
The third step of using the agora, which is ve which very much overlaps with the second step, is using the idea dominance index. All of the ideas uh, that every user includes in their ideological profile uh, become displayed in a composite index, which is called the idea dominance index. So if a number of people have the same idea in their profile, based on how popular that idea is and high, how highly each person ranks it, that idea will rise in standing on the index. In return, if a user finds an idea on, uh, that they like and they want to support it, they will be able to copy that idea into their own profile, thereby giving the idea more support. The fourth step in using the Agora is using it as an organizing tool to create grassroots meetings uh, with other members to discuss any of the ideas on the Idea Dominance Index. Now, like I said, these meetings will follow a similar format to that of the College of Complexes. So whoever organizes a meeting will be able to give an opening talk, preside over the discussion, ensure that everyone gets to make a summarized statement, and close the meeting with their own summary. Additionally, before any meeting, any of the scheduled participants would be able to see the ideological back backgrounds of all of the other participants. Uh, so that they could anticipate what types of discussions and arguments would be worth having. Seriously, how awesome would that be if before a presentation like this one, everyone here would know uh, what kinds of ideas this crowd supports. Uh, how many of you are atheists, or how many of you support free markets, and so on. And then, of course, there's the ultimate fifth step of using the Agora, which is the campaign manager function. Uh, where any international logic party member can announce themselves uh, as a candidate for a political office or to support other party members in their campaigns. All of the candidates uh, for an office would be listed according to the dominance of the ideas that they hold. Uh, but then they could be filtered by each member according to the various criteria that a member per personally cares about. And finally, um, each candidate would be subject to democratic approval or disapproval by each party member. Now, uh, some of you might wonder, what's to stop people from claiming that they support a popular idea just to gain in popularity? Well, you have to remember that this is the international logic party. And our guiding principle is logic. So people trying to game the system by picking ideas based on popularity will easily be identified because the popular ideas will often be contradictory to one another. There are actually some interesting scenarios to consider here, uh, but I'm not going to get into that during the presentation. All I will say is that even in the worst case scenario, this system still works better than democracy as we have it uh, right now. That's because even a corrupt candidate will still be accountable to the very precise will of the people, or they will simply be replaced by the next candidate in line. And there are plenty of intelligent and caring people who are ready to do a good job. Thus, the International Logic Party completely solves the problem of power vacuums. There's one more very important aspect of Igora, and you could call it the sixth step of using the system. This aspect is, let's see who can call it out. What, the, what does politics run on? Money. Exactly. So here's the thing. I'm not exaggerating this one bit. Uh, the International Logic Party has the ability to almost completely influence the influence of special money, the special interest money in politics. I'm going to say this again because it's fun and because I can. The International Logic Party has the ability to almost completely eliminate the influence of special interest money in politics. Okay. So uh, remember the third party principle. It is that no candidate running a campaign for a party nomination or for any public office with the party nomination may accept any funding towards their campaign from anyone except the party. <coughs> Igora is essentially a market, and just like any market, it will have advertising. The advertisers will pay for that advertising, and the profits from those payments will be turned over to the users of the system. So imagine it's like Facebook, but you're getting paid for using it. However, if you are a member of the party, you will only be able to use that money one way, which is to support the political campaigns of party members. That will be the only source of funding for any candidate to run their political campaign. 
we in this uh, country and around the world will never have to worry about campaign finance reform again. The International Logic Party is campaign finance reform. Awesome stuff. Huh. Okay, so let's talk briefly about where we're at. Okay. Uh, the International Logic Party has 19 founding members uh, who currently are the only official members because we don't have the GORA, which would allow us to expand our official the member base. But we do have a Facebook page and we currently have about 150 likes. We do not have a constitution, but the details of our operation and certain records are available on a GoFundMe page dedicated to gathering funds to construct the Agora. On this GoFundMe page, we currently have gathered $120 from donations. Yes, we need more. The Agora is nowhere close to being completed or even started, but we do have a basic design courtesy of Taras Hrenev of Walton Street Web Design. Uh, locally here in Chicago. And I want to take this opportunity to express our gratitude uh, to him again for his contribution. However, considering that I'm personally committed to ensuring that the Agora is built one way or another, I have begun recruiting a team of programmers who will help me achieve this task. At this time, I'm personally backing $2,300 to whoever does this. But of course, I'm looking for other donors and co-investors because we will definitely require more resources. Now, let's try to look into the future. I have no doubt in my mind that the International Logic Party will change the world for the better. It's going to evolve democracy. Right now, the basic model by which democracy works is that the candidates give rise to the issues and the issues give rise to the voters. The Agora reverses that process. With us, the voters give rise to the issues and the issues give rise to the candidates. The, uh, so that the candidates are essentially little more than administrators of the public will, while at the same time, minority opinions still have a high-profile platform to express uh, their opposition and concern. This is perfect democracy. Not only that, Igor is a philosophical tool that can advance human understanding of our existence and what we should do with it. My prediction is uh, for... My prediction for the success and growth of the International Logic Party primarily hinges on Igora working as a philosophical tool. Once Igora is built, I foresee it having four stages of growth. The first stage will be philosophical. Uh, the vision here is that at this stage, even a small base of users will find it rewarding to use the system, invite their friends and acquaintances, propelling Igora into the second stage. The second stage will be social, during which people uh, will begin uh, being able to network with a wider pool of people. As we go, grow during the second stage, we will find advertisers who will begin supplying the system with a reliable, with a, a reliable source of revenue. Once we become, uh, become able to channel that income towards uh, each user, we will achieve our third stage. The third stage will be economic, and the user, user base will expand due to the financial incentives. Ultimately, Igora will reach its political stage. During this stage, we will have a sufficient user base for people to begin exercising their political power. Now, the power might first be in the form that the International Logic Party will function as a swing vote between the other uh, major parties. And so our user base uh, will demand that the other party candidates will at least create ideological profiles on Igora, which in turn will become public knowledge and, and help decide elections. This is what I meant when I said that we can evolve politics without ever having our own candidates. But eventually the voters will realize that they don't need the other political parties. And almost all of the political campaigns uh, will be done through Igora and the Inter International Logic Party. I expect that if we're able to keep up with all technological requirements, from the time that Igora is built uh, and becomes functional, the International Logic Party will control most, if not all, of the world's governments within five years, maybe six, but definitely less than ten. We will be unstoppable. College of Complexes, your move. All right, we uh, are probably going to go to questions. Normally, we have Andy or somebody help guide you if you don't mind. Uh
uh, helping out a little bit. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, ask. Sure, the sure. Okay. So. All right. Let's have some questions. First one for me. I have heard. Hey Tim, can you take over for about ten minutes? Moderate. We're gonna. We'll we'll self moderate and do what we need to do. I'll be through in a few minutes. Um, we have we have uh, heard this before of another plan to save the world, so to speak. I have a friend of mine who spent almost five years, uh, for example, and he has a different way of looking at things, of achieving through democracy through a playoff system where the politicians go through, and he's quite detailed on it. And I'm hearing from you another social networking program that that might work. What is different about your expectations versus others who have come up with some of the same types of things, you know, whether it be more implemented voting or some other procedures. I'm just asking, what sets your program apart from others that we may have heard of over the years? Sure. Um, there are a lot of differences, and I think you would see that if you looked at the details of, um, of how the system is supposed to work. First of all, the fundamental difference is that this is a market. Markets are a proven technology, whether, and, and in spite of most of people not actually understanding how markets work, they still work. Even with an ignorant public, markets <laughs> still deliver better results. Uh, so, you know, for, from my experience in discussing this idea with other people, it takes, it takes a while to explain how this, how this works, just like it takes a while to explain economic concepts. Uh, so while trying to build it, it's really hard getting this idea across. It will be very easy to use once it's actually built, just like a marketplace. You don't have to, you don't have to understand the law of supply and demand to shop around and get the best price uh, at a market from, from a particular vendor. So it's similar to that. Um, from, from what you described, it doesn't sound like this system has any application of a market to it. Um, Again, the other aspect of this being a market is how it gets implemented to reverse the democratic process. Um, as opposed to candidates who give put forth their issues, and then of course they compromise their issues to get more voters, so we know they're full of crap. Um, well, for the most part. Well, we don't know that, but there's a good chance. Um, and then from those issues, that gives rise to the voters. They try to gather people around them. Well, you get, you get candidates that might represent you on one thing, but don't represent you on something else. And then you're forced to support these people because you're worried about who else might get elected. This changes everything. The issues come from the, from the voters. That's where, that's where everything starts. That's where the power starts. They say what they want. And based on the dominant ideas, that's where the candidates arise from. If somebody wants to run for office, uh, they don't just get to run for office because they want to run for office. They need to actually represent what the people want. I mean, that's, you know, the people who will rise up are, are the ones who have proven themselves through discussions and face-to-face -face interactions at a grassroots level so that people have confidence that people, these people are for real. And they will have a track record of showing that through their discussions and through their services at a lower level, uh, through lower level elections. So, um, so this definitely gets the voice of the people into the halls of government. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. How would you uh, transition, let's say, from, uh, I know that there has to be like a time limit on discussion. Let's say if you had a really complicated topic like the military, you know, like funding for the military and how much military we should have and that. So how much time would you allow for discussions and debates and how, how long would you involve a lot of different people? Good question and you know there's a lot of different things that I didn't even get close to covering in this presentation. That is, that is a good question that actually gets at one of those things. The thing is that each meeting does not have to be conclusive that everybody all, that everyone comes to the same conclusion. What, what you actually end up doing is you understand where other people are coming from and you're not trying to change everyone's mind. You're trying to talk to a few people who you might relate with and then network, you might have a lot of issues that you're in common, uh, that you have in common, but then your opinions diverge at a certain point. So you're able to specifically address that issue with just one particular person. And maybe just for that day, you might focus on 
discussing things with that one person. Now, if that if you actually successfully educate that person, I mean, you might be the one yourself who gets educated. But um, so you got to be open to that. Again, that's one of the fundamental principles. Um, but so if you succeed in changing one person's opinion, or if your own opinion changes, that changes this. That changes the market. Well, technically, this is a stock market. Every idea in itself is a stock. So if somebody's idea changes, they go back home, they log in to the, to the portal, and they change which ideas they support on the index. So that idea now has a slightly different standing. And then according to that idea, the next day when you come back to discuss with other people, overall, over many, many cycles, eventually the society learns from itself. Um, so, so it is a it is a big long-term process of discussion. It's, um, not uh, not everything would be settled at one particular meeting. A meeting might be scheduled for one particular topic, but the people that attend it, for whatever reason, they might find that it is important to discuss a more fundamental issue. You know, uh, I'm not again. There's so many discussions to be had exploring what types of issues people might get into. But people might come together to discuss the wall, but somebody else might come there and instead of talk, trying to talk about the wall, they might tell them, they might want to discuss about how the wall idea is inconsistent with their Christian values, or something like that. That's one example. There's, so there's, so things can easily go deeper. You know, Whatever the topic is, it, things might change topic, but it will be conclusive at, in some way, and it will be reflected in the stock market of ideas. Next question. Um, who's next question? Oh, yes. yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, what about uh, the slogan that is sometimes heard here about one fool at a time? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I what, he wants to know what your slogan may be with the International Logic Party. We, for one, ours is, is one fool at a time. That's not a bad slogan. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, or, or, but what, what is? Have you gotten a slogan yet, or thought of anything along for the International Logic Party? No, no, I, that that is not something that has occurred to me. That is not something that anyone else has brought up. Um, if you would like to think of one, and if, if you share it, and if other people like it, who knows, maybe it will become adopted in some sense. Uh, one fool at a time is actually not a bad slogan, so uh, that might, that, that's very applicable here as well. As in a corollary to you, you, I noticed you have a Twitter account, you have a Facebook page. Facebook and Twitter. Uh, why aren't you have a web page yet that's got some more information on it? Well. So our information, we, uh, like I was saying, thanks to Taras training of Walton Street Web Design, we do have a basic website. It essentially is like a cover of a book. It doesn't have any of the functionalities that we need. Um, it's, I think it's kind of elegant with what we were working with, with the limited, uh, limited capabilities at this time. Um, and so it kind of gives you a general idea of what you're supposed to be able to do on the website, but at this time you can't do any of that. Uh, but when you do click to enter, when you go click to connect to the next step, that takes you to the GoFundMe campaign where everything is laid out in detail about how the system is supposed to work. Okay. It's just your website wasn't listed on the college homepage or your Facebook profile. Uh, we did not have the web page at the time. Oh. Everything has been slowly progressing and some things before others. Would you care to give it now for the... Uh... Uh, sure. The website is on the handout that I gave to you. It is igora-ilp.org. That's E-G-O-R-A hyphen I-L-P dot org. So it should be at the bottom of that handout that I Because I've already pasted on your, on your, uh, I've already posted on your Facebook page that, that I'm recording the talk and it'll be available Sunday night. Terrific. All right, next question, please. Next, yes, please. Okay, um, um, and sorry, I did miss some of your presentation. Um, but you say um, you're going to elect party members with the most intellectual integrity um, and the highest qualifications. Um, what do you mean by most intellectual integrity and what do you see as the highest qualifications? I don't know. What do you mean? I mean, what, what do you think of those things? What would that mean to you? That's how you're going to be making your decision. Uh, I mean. 
It sounds good, right? I, it, I mean, isn't that something what you what, what you'd like, whatever that means? Um, I think it's going to be up, up to everyone else for everyone else to decide. Now, here's the thing: uh, the logic party, the international logic party, does not tell anyone what is logical. That is for people for themselves to decide. It's 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 a market-based solution to a philosophical problem. Um, there is no one's authority who's higher than anyone else's in this when it comes to telling people what is logic, except potentially logic professors who decide to participate and be members. So you might listen to them on that basis, but not based on their party standing. Okay. Yes? Do you have a book or anything like that, or white papers or anything that describe this whole process? You said, do we have a book? book or white papers? Or uh, white papers, that's the goal. Can someone, some things guiding you guys as you work this well, thing well. out. Has anyone written any of that down yet? Or that is, that is on the GoFundMe page. GoFundMe page has all of the details about... Um, so if you go to our website, igora-ilp.org, and if you click on enter, you'll see the, the graphic. If you click on the graphic, that will take you to the GoFundMe page. Um, it, with about... 10 to 15 pages describing how everything is supposed to work and obviously certain details are still to be determined but those are small very small things um, but it's almost like a constitution except it's not officially a constitution um, again there are a lot of questions here that you know I didn't even bring out during this discussion um, but this party will need to be incorporated uh, within every country and that will be the role of people, of the leadership uh, that is local to those countries to do that. And so I expect at those levels, they will be creating their own constitutions. And in those constitutions, including the fact that they will use, uh, well, first of all, the party principles, as well uh, as that they are like a subsidiary of the International Logic Party. At a national level, they might be the Logic Party or the American Logic Party. I can't even imagine that right now. Or they might be International Logic Party of the United States or something like that. But so they would be creating their own constitutions based on their support of the overall system. Yes, next question. Yeah, Caesar, maybe I missed it, but the second principle talks about transparent versus, oh, I guess they're opaque ideas. And I think, could you explain the difference between what's a transparent idea? Because I'm sure that's what I've been listening to sure. all these years at the college. Sure. <laughs> um, so the transparency refers to the fact that everyone is making their own ideological profile. And of course, they are maintaining their true legal identity not hiding behind hidden profiles. That is the only real way to actually ensure that this uh, everything is honest. Um, so every, everyone's identity is their real identity. Um, that whatever ideas that they support, if, for example, you are a Nazi and you, know, and you are against certain groups of people for racist reasons, the only way to promote that idea is to be open about it and include that idea in your ideological profile. And other people will be able to see that. You're the Nazi, you know? They, 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 see, they see your name, you know, they ask you what your name, they see your ideological profile before the meeting, and they're like, oh, this is the guy who had um, a Nazi in, you know, in his profile. So they know, everyone knows who they're dealing with. Yes, next question. Josh, could uh, you please give us your uh, definitions of both uh, logic and philosophy, since they play a big role in your party, in your party. Definition, please. Um, my own definitions about logic and philosophy. Well, uh, philosophy, it's the, you know, it's the love of wisdom, right? Um, what is the that? Theology, that's what you Etymology. You know, to be honest with you, I've I, again, I've never been uh, very big on the on a lot of the uh, the philosophy lingo. As far as I'm concerned, philosophy belongs to the common people. Um, if if you cannot relate your ideas to the common man, then your ideas are problematic. Um, 
you know what? In all the years of philosophy, I still don't remember what etymology is. I don't. Um, one of the well, when it comes down to logic, um, causality is, I think, the, the main idea. Um, what is meant by love of wisdom. Um, but yeah, uh, which is laws of thinking. And again, I think one of the laws of thinking is causality, is understanding that uh, the concept that one thing causes something else. Also, there is categorical thinking. Um, there is, uh, I think, mathematical, if that's a separate one. Uh, so, so yeah, there are a few laws to logic. That, Yes. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this whole thing with the Agora project, and it would make like a perfect, perfect Facebook add-on to some of the data they already have. Have you thought about something along those lines? No. Um, have I thought about turning this into a Facebook add-on? Well, I don't Just think Facebook <clears throat> is interested in doing that, uh, first of all. Um, I think they are a social networking platform. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in a way Facebook is a lot like a drug. It's the stupidity of Facebook that keeps you addicted to it. It's the illusion that you're going to accomplish something through it, uh, and you don't. And I think uh, Igor is actually very anti-thematic of that. Um, there are other aspects. Uh, I also am not interested in dealing with the administration of Facebook. Also, there's there's a big question that's not being asked here, which is who administers Igora? Ah. And that's, uh, you know what, if you're interested in that, I invite you and challenge you to check out that platform itself. Uh, I think you will have a very interesting, uh, fun time reading it. We already got it up on the laptop here. Well, good, you get to know the answer to that question. It's, 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 it's neat. Um, if there's no other questions, we're gonna ask one more. Can you tell us a little bit about your other members? Just real quick, though, just to answer your other question, I guess the, the administration of Agora is very different than from the way that Facebook is administered, so it, the two are very incompatible. Uh, about our other members, um, I would prefer that they speak for themselves, but okay. their information is on the GoFundMe page. Um, that was a part of being a founding member, is that you are public about your identity and being included in that project, as well as the confidence of being associated with me uh, in, in this undertaking of trying to gather resources. Uh, it is a big responsibility. I, I do think of it that way. Honestly, I wish it would be a lot easier if I had the means to do it myself. So, um, but since I'm put in that position, then you know I've taken on that responsibility and other people are sharing in that with me to some extent, um, if by nothing else than by association. Uh, at this point, I am the treasurer, so to speak. Uh, there's no one else who has assigned, been assigned to that role. Or so, yeah, it, I wish it was, uh, yeah, there was a, a little bit more people, you know, sharing in that responsibility. Yes, my question to you is this: I'm still not quite sh quite sure uh, what is it that your party wants to do about campaign finance reform? What we want to do about campaign finance reform. Um, finance and campaign. The only way that anyone, any person gets funded is through the limited resources that are contributed to them from other people. And the other, again, there are so many issues that we have not discussed. One of those is how much everyone gets, you know, like what their share is. And that is based on how much they actually participate in real life meetings. So if you want to be more 
involved in politics if you want to support cer certain candidates more. The way to do that is to earn more by attending more in discussions. So unlike the, unlike the current democracy that incentivizes people to stay out of it, it actually makes more sense to not be involved in it, this system incentivizes participation. So if you want to support a particular candidate more financially, then it's the only way to do that is to earn more through the system by participating more in the meetings, in the discussions, exchanging ideas with other people, being open to criticism from other people, and then you will earn more to be able to participate other candidates, uh, to, to support other candidates more. Uh, now, of course, there will be other streams of revenue. Like, for example, if, you, if we have a chapter in a certain nation, and we have, or even in a, a region of that nation, uh, money can be collected from other sources. But that money is not going to go to support any particular candidate. That money will go to support the party. It will go to, for uh, billboards that support the party. And if any particular candidate is being supported um, in that region, then all of the other party candidates that are pertinent to that region will also be getting supported. So if you are seeing a, an international logic party billboard, and one candidate might be a communist, another one might be a fascist, and both of them will be getting an equal amount of support from the party. The party does not discriminate on ideas, it's up to the people to do that. Yes? How do you deal with individual candidates contributing to the party? Individual candidates consider, uh, contributing to their own campaign. Right. That is an excellent question. Um, that is something uh, I was thinking uh, actually up until a few days ago. And uh, honestly, this, this might be, but just so you know, I, I am the designer for the most part of this whole concept. And, um, and not that I've excluded other input, it's just I haven't had much other input. <laughs> that is a good uh, type of question to, to contribute input on. Um, I've come to the conclusion that I think it would be better if uh, candidates did not contribute to their own campaign. Um, just so you know, there are, uh, there are various ways. So for example, let's say somebody is running a campaign. Uh, there are various ways to actually contribute to that. Because any campaign rally is actually being organized as a meeting. There's a limit to how many meetings any person can organize for them uh, on their own, like per amount of time. You can only uh, organize your own meeting, uh, a meeting, uh, every 23 days. If you want to have more meetings where you get to speak about your own ideas, somebody else has to create a meeting for you and invite you and be the guest speaker. <coughs> and other people are also able to RSVP to that meeting, including your opposition. So this is what I meant about, about having an equal platform. So if you have somebody who is a very prominent candidate, but there's somebody else with a very important concern, and they want to challenge you on it, and if they get the RSVP, or if one of their supporters RSVP, they're able to give you the floor, and you could potentially have you know, a near nobody confronting a high-profile person on an equal footing, at least for a certain amount of, of time. And so, uh, so let's say you do have this high-profile candidate. They do. They are limited in how much money they uh, they have from contributions. Somebody else who's organizing that meeting, let's say it's a big uh, football team owner who has the stadium, and they organize an <coughs> event in the stadium. And so, essentially, they are contributing to that campaign through outside means by giving a platform for this uh, person to speak. But other people are also able to use that platform. <coughs> you know what I mean, right? I think so. Uh, that's far yeah. off. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, you know what? Uh, that gentleman right yeah. there. Now, uh, we're entering a period of time here where there's an election coming up that uh, might be extremely <coughs> important to uh, our republic. I'm not calling it a democracy. Uh, uh, and. Um, for the survival of just the opportunity for somebody to try to set up what you're doing, it might be necessary for your intellectual international logic party and the people in it to uh, at least jump on board the, uh, uh, the opposition party to the party of tyranny, shall we say. And 
don't you think that that might be a more appropriate thing to do for the next uh, seven months or so? I think that's a complete waste of time. I am looking at the big picture here. Um, uh, the world is burning and it's going to keep burning. It's never really going to burn out. It's never going to explode. And this sense of urgency that all of this uh, that's going on, I mean, sure, things could get worse. They, they very well could get worse. But for the most part, it is a stable burn. It is, it, and so to, to, with every election, to chase, uh, I don't know, the pink dragon, whatever that means. Is that a, I, I didn't, I'm not even sure what that reference is, but something that you can never, it's, it's like Sisyphus, you know, always pushing, pushing off, doing an impossible task, and, and focusing on always what's in front of you instead of looking at the big picture, you're always going to keep uh, chasing what's right in front of you. So no, I don't even care about what's going on in politics right now. It's a total waste of time. Uh, yes, Charles. These are... Uh what if I study all the issues and <coughs> post them on my profile on the eGora platform, and then an hour later, a bunch of these nincompoops from the college come and post their ideas and outnumber me? Isn't that going to be government by a nincompoop? <laughs> well, That's what there, the isn't, uh, there aren't that many members of the College of Complexes to upset the system that way. Um, well, one of the, what, the mob has many, right, right. the mob right. has no brains. No, one of the key uh, aspects of this is that stability comes from size. And so, um, yes, the system will be unstable at an early stage. Um, and actually, you know, one of the best things that could happen to the International Logic Party is to be taken over by uh, a really controversial, illogical person, at least for some time, because that would give us a certain amount of exposure um, to mo mobilize the logical people, to actually realize that, hey, we can take the system back and we can actually make it work. Um, so I'm actually not worried about controversial candidates. In a certain sense, they uh, they are good for the concept. Um, I am much more concerned about getting the people who really understand things, mobilizing them to creating this website, to creating this platform, so that we can worry about small problems like that. The big problem is to build the Agora. That's from then on, everything is easy. Everything will solve itself. Yes, sir. Uh, how, how, how would you uh, relate the Logic Party to, say, the way things are run in the Soviet Union? How would I relate the International Logic Party to the way things are right, running in the Soviet Union? You mean like Russia currently? Is that, is that what you mean? Well, I think, um, unlike anyone else, I think the International Logic Party can, on, can you believe me, <laughs> uh, can unscrew oh, Russia. Um, but we can unscrew the world. It's, this is not, it's, it's, it's not a far-fetched concept. It's actually almost unavoidable. Uh, it is unavoidable. The only question is, do we get enough people to build the Agora? That's the only question. Um, the Agora, so the Agora program and its profile is the entire basis of the International Logic okay, Party. You've obvious, so you had like a working six, prototype okay. yet at all, or or some kind of a program in house that's workable right now? Do we have a workable uh, prototype of the Agora? Yeah, do you have a piece of uh, paper and a pen? <laughs> we could start writing our, uh, down our ideas and start exchanging them and actually doing that on paper. So, and this is one of the, one of the things. Um, if, for whatever reason, you're still unconvinced about this, you can test this for yourself. You can test the philosophical applications of these ideas by creating your own ideological profile. And I think you will find this experience to be very rewarding. I have, myself. It actually has helped me to relay my philosophy to other people and to explain to people why I have certain ideas and how they relate to my fundamental observations of the universe and my existence in it. Now is this something that could be done on pen and paper with a group? It is something that could be done on, with pen and paper with a group. I think it would be a fantastic exercise. Can you tell us briefly how to do this then? No. 
Um, well, oh, yes, I can tell you briefly. Um, so, um, again, so you have 23 ideas, and it's actually when you look at the when you look at the GoFundMe, it's a little bit more nuanced than that because 23 ideas is your active list. You also have an inactive list. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, but you give your ideas starting from the most fundamental and, and uh, to the most practical. Probably the best way to illustrate this is by looking at my own ideological profile. I've created my own ideological profile and I've made it public on the GoFundMe campaign as well as through the Facebook, uh, as well as through our Facebook page. There's actually one other uh, ideological profile that exists. It is by one of our other founding members. Um, at this point, we've there is one idea that he has posted that I am willing to copy into my own profile. So the idea is that I make, I make a list of my own ideas. And here's one of the fundamental things, and this takes, a little, uh, t this takes a little while for people to really appreciate, is that when you're creating your ideas, you, do, you want to keep your ideas uh, separate. You really want to <coughs> make them into segments. So for example, as an example, what he was doing, he was talk, criticizing, uh, I think, an economic system or maybe a religious system, but he, then he was also saying that it's just as bad as, as, uh, as he, was, he was talking, he was saying one thing about one system and then he was relating it to another one. But the point was that I was willing to support his idea up until a certain point where he started comparing it to, let's say, economics to religion, right? Mm -hmm. He was relaying an, an economics idea to a religious idea, and I was saying, I'm like, I was on board with you about, I think it was, I was on board with you about the religion until he started comparing it to economics. And I'm saying, you need to seg segment, segment your ideas more um, so that bad ideas, or at least what other people think are bad ideas, do not compromise your good ideas. And so this really, when, you, when you're creating your ideas, one of the guiding uh, values or one of the guiding principles that you want to be using is, is to always keep in mind a balance between authenticity and community. You want your idea to be as authentic to yourself, to, to your review of the world, but also putting it in such a way that the highest number of people would be willing to share it and copy that into their own profile. Um, so again, uh, my profile is available on the, you know, and you can look at that, and believe me, you're not gonna like a lot of my ideas. I'm fine with that, that's not the point. Right. The point is that you will see how, how those, the idea flow. And so my ideas flow uh, from uh, me talking about kind of our place in the universe down to the, Right. Um, you know, my ideas of economics, you know, my view of the markets, my view of borders and uh, con controlling immigration. All this, so those, fun uh, those practical ideas derive from the other ones and there is a continuous flow and that is how uh, somebody should be doing that. But, you know, I'm not prepared to give examples right, here right, right now. Right. It would be better to do this, uh, you know. But, um, you know, I, I'm just trying because you have a forum it's being recorded right now. I was just trying to, in a sense, give you a chance to really explain and, and, and maybe do it like a little uh, mini way. I think you've explained yourself pretty well. Um, you've ex tried to explain the Egora program, but if you were trying to do it in like say a five minute version, what is that exactly? The Agora program is a social networking program that will help people make decisions politically, correct? Uh, well, I, usually when I try to relate this concept, I start from the International Logic Party. That is usually the starting point. And, and so I will say that we, uh, uh, honestly, I came here ready for a longer <laughs> presentation, not so much a short one, so I've, I'm kind of out of thinking about the shorter one. Um, but uh, we are structured around uh, a networking platform that is fundamentally a uh, stock market for ideas. Uh, we are able to reverse the current uh, process of democracy from, uh, from the candidates giving rise to the issues and the issues giving rise to the voters. Instead with us, it's the candidates who give rise to the issues. Or the, the voters who give rise to the issues. Um, and the issues give rise to the candidates. Um, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. No, no, that, that's yeah. okay. I, I, I just was curious. 
Um, oh, other questions, uh, please? We do have Charles in the back there. Okay. Yeah, I... Tim, there's more than one person here tonight, you know. Uh, I'm sorry about that, Charlie. All right. Um, these are... Uh, hey, after the, I log on the platform, my ideas, to make them transparent, then there's a meeting of the local Igora, and I guess we meet, but what happens next? How do we end up with what is called government? And what do they do? Right, so uh, the meetings themselves aren't actually government it's, well, what, itself. What is the form of government? So uh, we, everything functions within the, current, within the current system. So this is a political party. We are trying to elect candidates that will function in the system as it is right now. Potentially in the future to rewrite the Constitution uh, based on whatever people want uh, or, a, or a better version of it. Um, I'll get to you in a moment. Um, but the meetings themselves are really for people to understand each other better and to determine what their ideas are about reality, to learn from each other so that um, people can listen to philosophers, economists, have those discussions, um, educate themselves. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's for people to gain confidence in certain people, for leaders to emerge, uh, for people to gather around those leaders and that those leaders are able to represent those issues in government. They already have this. It's called a caucus. And then the people decide on who candidates for now. So, isn't that the caucus? Yes, it is. It is a lot like the caucus, um, but it is different. It, it engages the voters in a different way. Um, first of all, it includes everyone. Um, so, this is a party that can actually include everyone. Um, regardless of what your perspectives are. Um, and you're able to discuss these issues with, with just about anyone. Um, people who have uh, similar and opposing views. Um, it is much more regular. It actually involves people on a daily or a weekly basis. It allows them to get involved as much as they want. Um, and especially, it allows people to address issues at a philosophical um, at, a, at a philosophical level. See, one of my views is that people cannot have politics unless they have a common philosophy. This actually allows people to work on the philosophy that they share, to bring up controversial things, or to to bring up uh, fundamental ideas, and discuss how. Uh, how policies should derive from those. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess. And uh, the other thing is that, again, it's fundamentally a stock market. So you're always involved by whatever idea you represent. You always have your foot in the door, so to speak. Even if for a while you're not attending the meeting, your idea is always getting represented. I think that in itself incentivizes voter participation more so than the caucus system right now. Yes? Uh, do you have any kind of uh, estimate or a handle on uh, how soon the party will get big enough and enough people involved worldwide to begin to uh, address the critical issues that are time critical facing humanity right now, like climate change, global warming? Uh, the spread of war around the world and you know pollution. These things that have to be addressed in the next few years, not 20 years from now. Thanks for asking that question. I think the critical issue facing humanity is building Agora. Um, that's the most important thing. Everything else is a distraction from it. Um, and that's because, see, this is an international, international system. Ideas can move freely. Ideas can move freely across borders. This is about bringing humanity on the same page. Um, I think we have the ability to actually reduce conflict between nations. I, again, actually realize that people in countries such as Russia and people in countries such as the United States, they really have the same interests, identical interests. They're simply being divided by their governments. 
we have the ability to connect people or, uh, in spite of governments, around governments. Um, eventually, humanity will develop a common ideology, and, and national differences will really be based on nothing but cultural differences on how some people, you know, pre, pre, prepare their food or how, what, kind of, what kind of clothes that they wear. Um, it's going to be much more trivial issues. It's it, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a whole different relationship of people. This is the other aspect of this: is that an illegal immigrant can come and express their opinions through a, a party might be a, an election might be or a campaign happening here, and meetings are scheduled based on that. You could have illegal immigrants or tourists from another country who are just interested in a particular topic. People traveling around the world just to participate in discussions in other places and and, um, and all of those ideas are valid. Everyone has a place. That is not something that, that currently exists in, in I think any of the any of the other systems. And so through this type of interaction people will be able to address those issues like climate change. Um, people will be able to connect around borders to address global issues like like again climate change, war, uh, disease economic disparity I, uh, we will that I think this is a much more efficient system for allowing good ideas to come to the surface uh, Go ahead. yeah what's going to prevent the Russians putting a thousand fake people on there and voting in favor of things that they really like uh, how do you detect that great question um, the way to authenticate that will be um, through redundancy and through uh, participation. So, and believe me, this is, this, is a, this is an interesting question that I thought for a while about, and I think the best way to do that will be to, um, at each meeting, essentially anyone who makes a profile, it's not a validated profile until you attend a meeting and other people in real life can actually authenticate that your identity is the one that you are legally. Yeah. They can all do that to one another. You know, all these fake people can have this. Who asked that question? Uh, yes, uh, but any any one of those meetings will be scheduled publicly, and anyone will be able to attend that meeting and to find out whether this is a real meeting that is taking place or if it's a fake meeting. So uh, and so, yes, there will definitely be fake profiles, but it won't be enough to upset the system. Ellen. Yes. Um, I share his concern as well, and I'm not sure I really understand your answer. But also, you mentioned that you were going to talk at the end about the administration of the Igor, Igora, and I don't think you did. Well, How long is uh, it going to be administered? Okay, I was going to leave that for you to do the reading on your own. Um, there is only one person responsible, so everyone else would blame. Um, that person can be changed by the people when they decide for that change. Uh, the responsibility of that person will really just be to maintain the algorithm, uh, make sure that it is always transparent and that people can authenticate it so that nothing is being manipulated, as well as to administer uh, the revenue that is generated by the system and to make sure that it's uh, going to the people. Is there a, a safeguard or... The safeguard is, again, redundancy, and that is uh, the entire system will be public information, and if people become sufficiently dissatisfied with that, uh, anyone else is able to replicate it. <coughs> Everything here is, is not protected by copyright, so people will be able to create their own versions of this, and if people feel so sufficiently compelled, they are free to migrate to somebody else's. Um, somebody else's Igora, Igora too, let's say. Explain what copy left is. Copy left? Um, I'm only going to give you my interpretation of it, and that's just that anyone is able to take those ideas and uh, replicate them and improve upon them, uh, but any derivatives and any copies are also uh, subject to that same, uh, to that same okay. rule. Other questions? Um, right. If somebody is disabled, how are they going to attend this person? 
this meeting? Like, if they, they're bedridden. Um, I, I think disabled people are very able. Um, so that's the first thing. And second of all, I think they, uh, there's always the confidence in your fellow citizens. Um, and I think that actually goes a long way. And I mean, the same thing, how did the disabled people get to the ballot box? I mean, they find a way. Or it's, and, and here's the thing, ultimately, if a few people are not able to participate, probably not everyone will participate. But, uh, but, but overall, it's, it's not going to compromise the system. And I think those people's voices will be heard, at least from other mouths. Um, now, so if you guys have more questions, as long as everyone is able to do that, um, as long as we have time, I'm fine with that. One thing I just wanted to point out is it's really easy to criticize something. Um, and there are definitely things that might not be perfect about this. But the point of it, it is when you take it as a whole, it is still astronomically better than anything that we have. I want you to take that into consideration. Um, you know, just, just because you're able to deliver one criticism, whether I'm able to deliver a rebuttal to it on the, stop, uh, on the spot, doesn't compromise everything and means that it's all worthless. So just keep that in mind. All right. All right. All right. Give our speaker a hand. Sit down and uh, uh, Okay, this is the famous rebuttal period we're going to start. Uh, again, show of hands. Uh, who wants to give a rebuttal? And we'll try to figure out how much time will be for everybody. One, two, three. Okay, everybody gets 15 minutes. Does that sound good? <laughs> a little humor there, people. <laughs> okay, come on up and just start rebuttals. Everybody gets six minutes. Okay. We got time for that tonight. Right. If you use less, it's okay. All right. Why don't Who's you go first? I guess I am. Yes. Well, maybe we got all we got almost an hour yet. I believe Anthony Porter, All right. Um, I want to thank the speaker for a very interesting presentation. I don't know whether I agree with his ideas or not. That's something I'm going to have to think about. But I will say this. He did make a point that just because you choose to criticize um, some part of this program, does this, throw out, does this mean the whole thing is invalid? And I would say simply this. It's a comment that you've heard me quote before. It's a quote from Chicago's late mayor, not the recent Richard Daly, but his dad, Richard J. Daly, right. who, for the benefit of the younger people in here, was mayor from 1955 until the day he died in 1976. Wow. And the elder mayor Daly always used to say, I have been vilified. I have been, cru I have been criticized. I have been crucified. I have even been criticized. It's easy to criticize, to find flaws. But where are their programs? Where are their priorities? What trees do they plant? Think about it. Go ahead. Uh, no. As I pointed out a few times, um, I was involved with a third party. Uh, no. back in 1980, and um, I kind of regret that experience because um, I and other people contributed to uh, Jimmy Carter losing to Ronald Reagan, and that is kind of the root of our problems now. Um, so basically, um, people can have all their ideological, uh, I've been I ideological in my time and when I was younger, um, I perhaps didn't see things in the, quite the practical way that I see them now. Um, but uh, uh, all this stuff is great. You can try it as kind of an independent um, um, path um, to uh, do something that, you know, will be intellectual. <laughs> kind of, listen, the public doesn't deserve this. They're, they're, aren't going to jump into this. Um, 
we have a long way to go to get to the point where this kind of a plan uh, is going to be possible to be implemented. It ain't going to be any five or six years. I, I just have news for the speaker. Um, and we are at the point where we really can't do purity tests. Now, um, the speaker, I don't want to try to mispronounce your name. Um, you, you've got um, some very um, smart ideas, but smart isn't necessarily what's going to win because we just saw that stupid took over and stupid's taken over this country here and uh, we have to at least pull it back from the brink of uh, going over a cliff. Um, so purity tests or, um, uh, and obviously, you know, your new party is you know, not going to be right wing. It's clearly a left wing party. You, know, you tried to act like it was going to, you know, you're, you're setting it up to just evolve without any guidance. It's going to be guided by all the people, and there aren't, aren't going to be any bots somehow to get in there by accident or by on purpose. Um, but it's clearly a left, left leaning party because you say, well, no inconsistencies. Now, sometimes people on the left can be inconsistent too, but let's face it, we are, we are faced with the incredible inconsistency of Donald Trump and these uh, crazies. So we really have our task. Um, and that is, um, at this time, we've, we've got to at least rescue what we can of, um, of our republic. And, uh, and uh, we, this pie, we can't have these pie-in-the-sky things, except maybe as an independent thread that's on the side of the main task, which is uh, stopping the fascist takeover. And, uh, and uh, like I said, I mean, the original sin was partly mine, and I'm guilty. Uh, we got Ronald Reagan because people didn't see that there was a difference between the two major parties and uh, that they had to at least build up the Democratic Party to the point where it was powerful enough that you could have the liberal progressive wing that could make some um, uh, advances rather than always being retreating. And uh, uh, I'd love to see how in the world you... Um, if you ever got this war ongoing, uh, that it doesn't get taken over by the money of interests. Um, and anyhow, uh, nice, nice thinking, nice try, but we've all got to unite um, for the most important um, task uh, of uh, this early, uh, early in the century. Joshua <laughs> King, uh, Plato said. Um, you know, we won't have a just society until kings get philosophy, um, which is very unlikely, especially the present one, probably hasn't even read a book in his life. Uh, or philosophers become kings, but philosophers aren't interested in becoming kings because um, they know their ideals and ideas are too high for the masses. And, um, you know, they know they're in for life of frustration and couldn't do much. Um, they would be out of touch with the people that the people want bread and circuses, you know, and they don't want ideas. They can't handle them. It's too much. They call them boring. <laughs> they call them boring. Yeah, that's because, you know, I love who's talking, but well, for them, most of them. <clears throat> but I do like um, the idea of, um, uh, of the, the logic party, certainly, you know. Uh, and it is capable of organizing like-minded people around goals and the best goals. And uh, philosophy alone can know what justice is. That's what Plato's point was in the Republic. You know, only, um, we only know what um, justice is in our philosophies, our deep beliefs about life. What's the deep realities and what are the deep values and the deep truths. Justice is one of those. Justice is being fair to others. Uh, giving others their due, no more, no less. And uh, that's very difficult in this world. You know, this world is um, pretty imperfect. And, uh, and um, we really need um, <clears throat> some ideas to guide us, and we should try and reach those ideas, and we should try and know those ideas, but they're very hard to know. Um, but they're the only way. They're the only way. You've got to have some good ideas, that's all. <laughs> 
Good ideas and good values. Logic is the means to know those. Logic gives us the rules to test those. Uh, logic can test opinions, and he can tell you what a sound opinion is and a weak opinion. A lot of people think you can't do that. Well, they're just stirring men of logic, you know. There are tests, there are rules. Um, uh, there are, I got them in both my books. Well, my second one should probably come out this week. I found out yet, but uh, it's just an abridgment of the first book. But um, the rules, yeah, there are rules of thinking, rules of thought. Um, um, there's rules for um, induction, deduction. Deduction can test opinions and tell you which opinions are valid and which ones are not. They really can, but they, they have to be tested. The, the, you know, the premises of the arguments have to be tested by induction. Make sure the facts are straight first, and then you can test the opinions. And then, then logic gives us um, a guideline. It gives us a standard. It gives us something to judge everything by. And there is such a thing. There are objective standards. A lot of people think there is not. They think it's all subjective. But it's really mostly objective. But it's hard to know what's objective. It's hard for most people to even conceive of objectivity. They're, they're totally lost in their subjectivity. They think everything is subjective and everything is relative. But no, no, far from that. We're just not very good at knowing the world. Uh, we'd rather screw around on our computers and our cell phones instead and play silly games, you know. Um, uh, can we be guided by reason, Plato's faith? Well, um, Plato wasn't too sure of that either. Uh, he, he, was, he was no fool. Uh, he, um, he realized we're, we're not very good at reason, we're not very good at thinking. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's amazing we could do it, but we're not very good at it. You know, but after about five simple ideas, the uh, mind shuts down. Uh, 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 I went to the store to buy a loaf of bread. It cost five dollars. Now I can't go any further. Those are simple ideas, but um, some philosophers like Hegel, Kant, they could hold. 15, 20 ideas. Hegel could. Hegel could. Kant too. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so there's a couple who are good at reason, but most humans aren't very good at reason. Uh, at thinking. Uh, we're much more emotional, much more driven by what we want, our desires, our feelings. We can grasp the infinite, but and that's amazing, that's good, but we can't do much with it other than grasp it. So, so it's pretty incredible we do that. Um, yeah, reason is weak in humans, um, but as Plato emphasized, it's the best we got. We don't have anything better. We don't have anything more. Uh, to know the truth, anyhow, knowing, knowing the truth. We don't even really have any other way. There's no other way. But it's a pitiful candle in a dark sea <laughs> uh, of, uh, you know, and woe to anyone who tries to put it out. So we got to go by reason, we got to go by thinking, but it is hard. Uh, we need to be critical, we need to encourage them. Thinking, I think I'm over my six minutes, or no one's time in it. We, we were a little Ten more liberal. Ago. Ten seconds. Oh, in my last ten seconds, I'll, uh, I'd like to know, um, I'm you? sponsoring a, uh, a, uh, uh, another Seekers Dialogue on, um, on trying to go deep, trying to analyze the concept of materialism or acquiring material possessions and, and seeing if that's a good way to guide your life, to live your life. Well, like most people believe on the suburbs, <laughs> uh, particularly in the city too, Certainly, they think the main meaning of their life is acquire possessions, but uh, we'll, we'll examine that. I mean, next week, Friday, will be in my backyard. I uh, have a, 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 what I call pizza. I will have pizza. I'll uh, have a big cookout in, the, in, in July. Thank you. Yeah, Who's next? Oops, wow. Who's next? Charlie, who's next? All right, I'll go. Please. All right.
still writing it, but uh, all right, let's thank our speaker. Presentation here. It's an incipient ideas here, and I'll be eclectic as usual here. Uh, there's different ways of filtering ideas or issues, and there are different ways of filtering candidates. And he's come up with a mechanism here. Uh, I guess the Igora will filter the issues somewhat like an opinion poll, but I think he intends it to be infinitely more sophisticated than that. Um, and then they have meetings, which I guess are intended to select the candidates who will advance those ideas. Uh, the, uh, I don't know. The one thing that's missing, though, is it, there seems to be a, that a criteria that only the good ideas, or the worthwhile ideas, or issues, will be advanced. And I don't see any mechanism for ensuring or undertaking how that would take place. I kept thinking, if someone were an advocate of torture, uh, under various circumstances, what would preclude them from taking control of the Agora as well as the subsequent meetings? Yeah, they have these candidates advance uh, the concept of torture within society as being a method of dealing with this or that or so forth. What, what would preclude it? It's a, granted only a political party. There's not a thing in government. Now, the other thing is, uh, this came up with the superdelegates. I, I do not believe in this pluralistic uh, government. We live in a republic. That's what I mean. What is the process for filtering or structuring, filtering the candidates or filtering the, the issues? Uh, the masses have many has but no brains. There are people who do, do no, have no qualifications for issue for uh, posting their opinions on the Agora. They don't know the anything whatsoever regarding these issues, and yet they're equated exactly with someone who does. And you 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 equate, and that's the thing about. Like the primary, I don't know where they get into the primary process here. Now we're voting for in each state uh, for candidates for a political party. It, let me tell you, the political party used to be you had delegates to a convention, and these were people who were members of the party, worked for the party, did things for the party, kept it viable as a political party. And therefore, sooner they were elected by their representatives in each state to the national convention to select a nationwide candidate. And I don't know what's entirely wrong with that process. Now you have a thing where somebody kind of just shows up, so usually on a few seconds of TV or social media, and decides this or that is their candidate. That's the problem you've got. You're going to have this pluralism here. We, we, we just got it. You know, it's amazing in here. I'm sorry to be critical of it, but you're advancing a thing right at the time, and Doug got in on it at the very time it was shown to not work. We ended up with this complete nincompoop. I want to do everything under my power to ensure that that never happens again. And the only way I can do that is to ensure that those idiots do not have access any for any influence on our government. And you want to turn around and give more influence. We're going to end up with more Trump, not less. Really. It's one thing that's showing us what we ended up with. An, an idiot, a dangerous, a criminal, a guy who belongs in jail. I don't, I, he's not going to be, I'm sorry, Doug, he's not going to be, he's not going to be, uh, what do you call it? Um, and peace, he's going to be put in jail. 
<laughs> that's, that's what's going to happen with this guy. We don't have to wait around for that. Yeah, home. Every day of the week, they're coming up with more and more stories now. But honestly, these are some things to think about. Um, the uh, I kind of like the way the system we had, that the people looked over the candidates, and on the basis of their contribution to the political process, there was in fact a process determined. Um, now the other thing is, you had the Democratic Party was based on and the super delegates and the number of delegates you based. Is how well you you have little meetings how well each state performs. So now you have states that don't deliver any candidates for the ILP, and they're going to have this. That's what I mean. There also is criteria for each state and each municipality on how many delegates you got was based on how many people you got elected. Very simple. It was a wild thing. You got, you got delegates to the National Convention based on how successful you were, and the same thing they did in the city. The more Democratic votes you got in your ward determined the number of votes in the collective assembly of the Democratic Party of Chicago. So that's what I mean. That, I think that's the way it works. It shows that you're putting forth some effort. Even the Green Party had a criteria like that. In order to qualify as representing a congressional district, you had to demonstrate, present evidence that you actually did something in that district. Therefore, you got that vote for that district. If you could show that you were working that district. So that's one of the things there. And I, I think that's what I mean. This, this, this wonderful, I don't see, I think you're going to have bad ideas. I don't see anything to preclude from bad ideas precluded by a lot of people. I don't know, but we'll work at it. Take care. Come right back when you got your ideas a little further on. All right, we'll look forward to seeing you. Report on, I'll tell you what, come back. What is it? You said five years? How about two and a half years and then five years? We'll see how you're doing. All right, take care. Hey, I had to do that on the quick. Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. Got some time. I've got to go close my door. What was they negative? Um, hello, hi, my name is Ellen. Thank hello. you for your presentation. Um, I did miss some of it, so I'm still a bit confused about various aspects. I suppose you're saying it's a, um, it's a party. It's not like the whole form of government. There'll still be different parties and people can choose among, them. okay, that's better. For some reason I was thinking it would just take over everything immediately and, um, Okay, so I, I will, um, if after, afterwards, if you could give me your website, because it's actually not on your page of information that you gave us, or we couldn't find it, um, and um, yeah, I'd like to investigate that further, because it does, you know, it's um, interesting at least, um, and um, maybe valuable. So um, I just had some other things that have been on my mind that, I have found um, problematic um, going on in our society that I don't think is being given adequate attention. Um, and by the way, this microphone is not working well tonight. Um, tonight. One That's thing is well. that I am finding, something I am finding disturbing is that people uh, there's, there's a lot of dehumanization going on. People are really dehumanizing each other a lot, um, and it's not being challenged. And, you know, there's an idea that, you know, left, leftist people have, lefties have, that, you know, their, their views are kind of superior, and therefore kind of anything goes almost. Um, and and I, I noticed as well when I used to attend like uh, secular humanist meetings, there was also this idea that, oh, you know, we're the knowledgeable people and they're, you know, when, you know, you actually get to know the, some of those people and, and they're like anybody else, extremely flawed. So, um, what, this dehumanization, some, some, I want to give some examples. Um, the woman who ran against the mayor of Bolingbrook, and 
and, and, you know, and what bothers me is that when people are dehumanizing other people, other people think it's funny and they're laughing. You know, uh, I'm of Jewish ancestry, and I don't think any of this is funny. When you start dehumanizing people, you are leading the path, you know, to abuse, to abuse, genocide, uh, things of that nature. Um, the person who's running uh, against the mayor of Bolingbroke, who lost in the last election against him, she called him a turd. She called him a turd. I, I don't think that's funny. You might, you might think it's funny. I don't think it's funny. I mean, what are we saying about other people? Um, there is an alderman in Chicago, and he called Trump voters subhuman puddles of DNA. <laughs> Deplorable. Yeah, terrible. And, you know, we are not going to be able to discuss things, understand other people's perspectives, be able to incorporate their values, their views, um, legitimate points of interest that they have if we dehumanize them. You know, it's not like all you Trump like voters Trump are bad people. They're hillbillies. <laughs> Some of them are hillbillies, some, uh, uh, more of them are probably rural people. Uh, well, no, I don't know whether, and maybe not, they're not like Chicago, L.A., you know, uh, Miami. Uh, well, I'm not sure how Miami voted. But any, anyway, uh, one pull at a time, Charles. Um, we're, you know, we have to see what the legitimate or, or not so legitimate points are being made by other people Good. instead of just dismissing them out of hand. And one way we dismiss them is by dehumanizing them. Um, uh, a little while ago, um, a couple years ago, I was listening to um, 720 AM on the radio, which is a station I would almost never listen to. It just kind of by accident. I was listening to it. And the talk show host um, called members of ISIS roaches. I think roaches was the term used by the, was the term used by Hitler or some of the Nazis to describe Jewish people, okay? Before they slaughtered them. Okay, so when you when you don't address the legitimate concerns of people, but instead you um you, you know, um, they're gonna turn more radical. They're gonna turn more radical. Um uh, so that, that was really disturbing to me, and I mentioned it to a small group of people I was meeting with, and nobody really said anything. I, I'm outraged when people call other people roaches, okay? That's outrageous. That leads to genocide, okay? And it might be ISIS today, but it may be you tomorrow. Uh, what, what's the famous quote that, you know, they came for uh, uh, this group first and uh, since I wasn't a member of this group, I didn't care. And they came for this other group next and since I wasn't a member of that group, I didn't care. And down the line, and then finally when they came to me, you guys know the saying, there was no one left to complain. Um, <clears throat> Also, another thing, you know, I'm seeing, and this is including lefties, um, just the other day, somebody who, I'll just wrap this up real quick, um, who I consider, you know, a very nice and, um, a nice and, um, person, was, um, denigrating men. Uh, I, I had a repair done to my toilet, and there were three men working on it, and this woman was joking with another woman. Oh, how, does it, how many men does it take to change a toilet? And then they high-fived each other. And I personally felt that was like really obnoxious. I think, you know, it, it's rude. If you have a legitimate complaint about men because you've been hurt by certain, certain men, that's one thing. But to go around and to, you know, just denigrate them as a whole, I'm, I'm opposed to that, denigrating men, denigrating women. These are kind of things that people of a group often think that they're, oh, well, they're beyond reproach because I'm a lefty or I'm an atheist or whatever, and it's not the case. Thank you. So I can't tell my kids the class, the class no good? What? I can't tell the kid about the group on this morning. You don't have a Yeah, you say I can't tell my kids the class no good? I didn't say that.
Uh, yeah, you said don't denigrate any group. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the, 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 Charlie, why don't we just put it like this? I'm all for women's liberation as long as they stay at home to cook and clean. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> That's Archie Boker. I don't believe it myself, but uh, it does it does put the debate into, into proper perspective. <laughs> All right, now let's get on to some serious stuff here. I like your idea for a program. I like your idea for the ideas in the integrated marketplace. And I can also see that it comes from a large software background. And I can also see that, you know, you're trying to do your best to construct a system that might help change the world and work things in a better platform. I know that the, the heart's in the right place, but unless some, you know, you can get some funding and some other things, I'm not sure whether it's going to take or not. I mean, you know, the Igora and your platform, I think, need to be explained a little more clearer, and I know you're trying to do the best job you can doing that. Um, and my big suggestion to you, if you're really serious about promoting it, is get to a good old local postmasters club and just learn some of the art of public speaking and get to meetings and forums. Like, this is certainly a uh, good place to start. And I have to applaud you for that because you know you probably haven't done anything like this before or tried to really get into it. And I'm sure you have the Igora and it's some of its basic things under plan. Um, I know myself that I have had many friends of mine come up with a lot of other things like this and not get off the ground. I have a friend of mine who started a he has a device that will help demine landmines in Cambodia and he was working on it for almost five or six years but because of funding and his lack of not wanting to promote it properly the idea died. There's a couple other friends of mine too who had some similarly good equivalent ideas but because one of them did not want to dress properly or wear a suit or go and make public presentations about it saying oh but they'll get it because it's too good to be true. It too died. I have seen others that will and get some good traction because they have been promoted well, but they also too make logical sense. Your platform, the Igora for politics, to me makes logical sense. It makes at least from what I could gather, I got more of my information from looking at your GoFundMe site rather than the speech you were giving tonight as you were speaking. But I, I go with it with a mixed bag. You, you have to have the Laura up, up and operating a little bit. It was some kind of beta version or something and show people the, the, what it can do. Now, a lot, like I said, if a lot of the younger people who are active on Facebook and LinkedIn and other things already know the capability of social networking, and one of the few reasons I know about it being 56 years old is because I have to use it to help me in my job. And the simple fact that I have been on Facebook a number of times, and just within the last week I said something I shouldn't have and I got burned real quick, thinking, thinking that uh, nobody would see it except the couple of people were there. Well, well, I was wrong, but I do stand behind my comments and I'm alienated as one person for a while, but I fully explained what I meant. And I didn't back down. When I see her again, she said, have you changed your mind? I said, no. At least I'm transparent about what I say. And I mean, to be, you have to be diplomatic about it, of course. I commend you for what you've done. I, I really want to see you succeed because I do think your idea has a lot of merit. Um, and I know it's just in the beginning stages of what you've done, and so far from what I've seen on the site, you're, you're really trying to go at it about it in the right way. I guess what my bottom line is, is that I, I gather it with some skepticism and some misnomer, because I just don't see myself 
you know, the difference between a political party and some of the self-selection processes we have today versus, you know, what, why people want to come to this, why people want to do this, and why they want to spend time on this all over time. Um, I, I still find it amazing people spending all the time on Facebook that they do. But, again, things have been changing quite a bit with within the social networking space. It's only been less than 12 years that Facebook's been active. And look at what it's done right now with its influence. The only other thing I can say is that we've seen a real revolutionary change in the last 15 to 20 years with the internet. And as much as we think that it's changed the world in a lot of ways. It's remained the same too. Um, if you look at a book called *The Victorian Internet*, which is about what the impact of the telegraph was from 1896 onward, the book was published in the mid 90s. I'll be just a minute. You'll you'll see that real radical change occurred with the development of overseas shipping and ordering of women's fashion gowns from the deep south to the fashion houses of Europe when the transatlantic cable started to express shipping the bills of lading were what really caused a lot of that revolutionary change. They also said that wars would not be fought because governments could talk together a little bit more. They also said that even with the development of phones and radios, because of the instantaneous communications that were now available, that there would not, it would be an almost end to war because they could talk and work out the disputes in a real-time basis. How far we've come from that truth. What if there was just made war a lot more mechanized and uh, quicker to handle. To be honest, I like what you're doing. I like the ideas of integrating the social networking into the political change. But I also know, too, that political candidates are much, much smarter than we are. Much, much, much more adept at social networking than we are. Much, much more adept at uh, trying to manipulate us to get their vote than we are. So it's up to us, like anything else, to be educated, learn what is fake news and what is not, learn what is fact and not what is fiction, and make up our own minds. I've gone on a little bit too long-winded tonight, but I hope my point has been made clear. I wish you the best of success. I don't see realistically how it's going to happen right now, but I also like your concepts and what you're doing, because I think it could be a very valuable addition to what we've seen already around the world. Thank you for presenting tonight. Thank you, Speaker. Good luck uh, to your logic party. Uh, this week, we had uh, somebody who had a confirmation hearing to be head of one of the most powerful organizations in the world, Central Intelligence Agency, uh, CIA. Her name was uh, Gina Haspel. And uh, she oversaw torture at uh, presumably some known sites and some unknown sites, and then she erased some of the tapes of that act of violation of international and domestic crime. So that's how much logic you have in Washington, D.C. right now in 2018. <laughs> That's, that's your choice. Charlie. People's values are we the people's moral compasses and choices. Movements are the guiding light and motivating engine of we the people's choices to live as a civilization. 
The system is the architecture by which society is built. Public budgets are the money spent on the community's most vital needs. Campaigns are when we decide who is qualified to be in positions of leadership and what policies we prioritize. Elections are when we, the people, decide the future of our government and the goals of our communities are declared. And uprisings are when a system or a budget or a campaign or an election is not at all reflective of people's values and all attempts by movements to peacefully petition the government for a list of grievances have been disenfranchised by the crime of voter suppression and or election fraud or mischaracterized or ignored or slandered or censored or denied or abused or permanently silenced. The more the ruling class obstructs and removes and criminalizes we the people from our work to make this planet a home for all to be free, the more they unleash a revolutionary avalanche on themselves. I think it's a great thing when uh, everybody in this country right now participates in civics. I think it's a great thing when people discuss ideas. I think it's a beautiful thing when people uh, contribute their skills to make their community better. So I, I wish you much, much success. But as the son of two people who gave their all to the United States of America as some of their best and brightest, a, a nuclear physicist and an operating room nurse, I can tell you uh, very honestly, markets do not deliver better results. <laughs> markets are not proven entities. Uh, and I admit, I agree with you, I don't understand markets very well, just like I don't understand a noose around someone's neck. Is that done? I think we need a people planet of ideas, not a stock market. And the reason why we need a people planet is because we're living in a country right now where it's more and more obvious that if you have the money, you're going to eventually be the person who rises to the top. You yeah. fail upwards in Washington. Successful. And this is part of the language that they groom into our minds to think is normal way to converse. You know, some of the words you used were dominance, controlling, perfect, um, economists. Said this several times. Um, it's a very early stage in your party, so I'm not judging. I'm just saying I have heard other people use those words, who scare the shit out of me. Because they, if they met my mom, they would say, the reason you're in a nursing home right now and are not in your own home with a personal assistant, and Bruce Rahner is uh, of no consequence to how your quality of life should be as much as a trillionaire. It's difficult. It's difficult for me to hear at this point in time, at the 11th hour, once again stepping on this known trap door. It's difficult for me to hear that somebody who was told, don't worry, Henry Barton, radiation isn't that dangerous to you and your colleagues, and they all died of cancer. And let's just you know, remind ourselves once again, all those people who work around radiation, they die of cancer. Okay, they don't retire comfortably, healthy lives. <laughs> you know? That's not what I heard. But... That's, that's the reality. The Gina Haspels of the universe, the Scott Pruitts of the universe, et cetera, et cetera, they rise to the top while we continue to work for less than a living wage. I think a party that is based on the principle of a stock market is, uh, and I say this respectfully because I think uh, you, know, you and 19 other people are genuinely good people, uh, I think it's doomed. All right.
Okay, Andy, you'll get a chance to rebut, and then we'll get our speaker up there. I'd like to thank our speaker tonight for a thought-provoking presentation. It's good to see young people, people under 60, getting involved and recognizing that something has to be done. For those of you that didn't see it, this is for the camera that this is posted. Uh, look up uh, an article on Common Dreams Friday, uh, May 18th. There's a survey that just came out that says that 87% of the American public finds Trump less than trustworthy and less than honest. That is, 87% recognizes Trump as a habitual psychopathic liar. And no he can't help calling. himself. What? No name calling. No, that's, uh, that's in the newspaper. I'm not calling anybody's name here tonight. Uh, my question with that article is, what are the other 13% thinking? I think I, I, I'd like to see wide recognition of a new club. Uh, there's a, a cult. Some people are in a cult. And the, the acronym the, the, is called Hoo-yah, like, almost like the uh, military uh, Marines say hoo Well, this is hoo H-U-Y-A, hoo It means head up your ass. Some people live with their head up so far up their ass they can't see daylight. And that's a problem in America because they're being maintained in that kind of a bubble by the American media in which the billionaires, the Koch brothers and many others, pay none other than intellectual prostitutes, scientists that are paid big money to sell us false information coming out of places like the Heartland Institute, the American Enterprise Institute, ALEC from Washington, the Cato Institute. All these so-called conservative institutes are not really conservative in the term that conservative used to mean conserve resources, conserve uh, conserve the environment, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, it's a wholly different term for conservatives now. Uh, to be, and also, for those of you that didn't know, in about the last month or so, uh, articles have been showing up saying, there's like an invisible neon sign hanging over the White House flashing. For those that can see it, it says, if you have criminal tendencies, and if you've been convicted and spent time in prison and were pardoned by a former president, come on down. We got a job for you. We want your skills. If you have ethics, morals, and a conscience, as those things are currently understood by most people, those qualities, decent ethics, morals, and a conscience, those qualities will disqualify you for any job as a Republican anywhere in the country. The Republican Party has been quietly weeding out anybody without corporate criminal tendencies. And it's very, very, very far advanced. And it's not in the news. It's on independent websites that don't take advertising dollars. As I mentioned this before, the book and the project, Project Censored Out of Sonoma State, has been up and running for 41 years. They probably publish the top 25 blacked out stories every year that would change America overnight if they were covered rather than blacked out. Incidentally, we had a good question from Charlie earlier tonight. How can you tell the difference between a theory and a fact? Well, at one time, there was a theory that the Earth was round. There was a theory that the Earth revolved around the sun, and Galileo got, almost got burned at the stake for publishing the reality. He had to recant, but yet, Sir Thomas More said the, the maximum law is, is silence means consent. You know, the future belongs to solar and wind power and high efficiency if we choose to embrace it. If we, you know, I published a book 10 years ago, The Light at the End of the Tunnel. It's a fireball. The human race is going to embrace one of two kinds of atomic power. The fusion power out there, the reactors, the little atomic suns going off on Earth with nuclear bombs. That's our choice, and we have to choose 
in the next few years. We don't have 20 years to mess around. You forget with the third alternative, thorium molten yeah. salt reactors. <clears throat> Did I mention the called Booyah? Get up your ass. <laughs> I, th I think it's the other way around, but we'll there's, get into there's that a sometime. Cult. There's the Thorium cult with people that have been totally shielded right. from oh. the reality of the no. last 40 years yeah, of the disaster cult, of nuclear power. I call it the solar be, and wind cult. It's not going to be enough power to keep, well, that's get it, keep so, our words. Solar and wind is documented. Thorium is not. Oh, yes, it anyway, is. Anyway, uh, our speaker is going to have the last word not here. Quite. He and wants to speak for a couple minutes. Yes, okay. yes, it is. I don't want to take up too much time since I'm not speaking to get up here. But I will say the following. And I supported Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination in 2016. But we'll let this we'll let that pass since I'm trying to be as objective and as nonpartisan as I can in the comments that I'm about to make. I'm amazed that a person would be a supporter of full of time back there. Be a supporter of Bernie speak. Sanders in the primary, and yet urge an elitist system of government on this country. The gentleman in question argued for a return to the old boss rule convention system. And that system, which was the included the conventions of the 50s and the 60s when I was a boy, prior to 1972 when the governor was went in, but that system was still in effect. Not only would Bernie Sanders not have been nominated, or not, would not have been chosen as the presidential candidate, he wouldn't have even been on, on, the, on the ballot of the, at the convention. Why? Because the elder Mayor Daley, who I quoted earlier, and other party leaders like him across the country, like, say, House Speaker John McCormick, and others like them, they would have seen to it that Bernie Sanders was never even on the convention ballot in the first place. So, I'm sorry, I don't see a return to the boss rule of the vote or not? I don't see a return to boss rule of conventions or elitist government as an alternative to those problems. The bottom line is delivering votes, man. So, no, Charlie. The bottom line is that there was a little common sense. What does that mean? Thank you, David. <laughs> Lose? <laughs> All right, speaker gets the last word. Lose. Okay, we're speaking All right. the last word. Uh, let's uh, see if we can take all right, Charlie, let's let the speaker speak. I think uh, most of your questions and criticisms would be uh, they would be easily answered or refuted uh, simply by putting in a bit more effort into actually under understanding what I was presenting. I really don't think you guys did that. I think you're still stuck in the old paradigm, um, and you were insistent on perpetuating it. Um, honestly, the only time that I really got concerned is when. Um, because for the, for the most part, really, I, I wasn't concerned about the things that you said. Uh, the only thing that I did get concerned about is when Charlie brought up um, uh, the caucuses. Because, you know what, honestly, I don't know how caucuses work. I've never been to one. I've never been invited to one. Um, but there is one thing that I do know. I know that they do not want to hear my ideas. I know that if I went to a Democratic caucus, they would throw me out because I would not be talking about what they want to hear. And at the Republican one, the Republican one, they would do the same. One other thing I don't know about is how things work around the world in other countries. And you know what? We're taking on the whole world. Um, but that's not a problem because you know what? I know they don't have things figured out because I know people still aren't getting hurt. So you know what? I don't really care what they're doing. It doesn't matter because I know it doesn't work. Um, what was I going to say here? Oh. You know, um, yeah, so the other thing is, uh, my ideas in a lot of these places, they, they don't belong. They don't think they're good ideas. Uh, they think they have things figured out. Uh, and uh, so many of you are concerned with candidates with bad ideas. 
um, because all of you have things figured out and, and you all know <laughs> so well what are the good ideas and you're such great judges of that. Well, I'm not going to tell you what good ideas or bad ideas are. I mean, I will on a personal level, but uh, not for what a political party is. But I will tell you that I don't think you even know your own ideas. And that's why I'm going to challenge you and invite you to actually create your own ideological profile. I do want you to still put to the test the system because I don't think you really did. So create your own ideological profile and we can discuss about that. We can have a conversation about that uh, afterwards or outside of this. And uh, and then we're actually going to see. We're going to try to decide what the good ideas or bad, bad ideas are. But until then, I don't think we really have that much to talk about. Would you be willing on your website or your GoFundMe page to just put up a little bit of something on how we could do this on paper and maybe exchange them in an offline environment to give so us an idea? Putting together like a simple guideline for yes. maybe what, uh, what an ideal, I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. Because I would love to see how this would work, you know, if you could get a group of people together and have them work the fundamentals of the program, in a sense, in a, with a paper environment. It might make a long way to help educate the exact thing you're trying to do. And with some instructions, I think it would be an excellent idea. It is a really good idea. I'd right. like to do that. Yeah. Um, the only thing is that it does take time to do some of those right, things. You right. know, some ideas have to be rewritten. You have to go mm -hmm. home and think about it, sleep on it. You know, yeah. Somebody else might say something that you want. Um, but yeah, creating a guideline for how to do that more conveniently, I will definitely be working on that. So thank you for that. OK. Um, let's thank our speaker one more time. All right. Have a look out, Andy. Okay, thank you all for coming. It's on the uh, side. Adjourn, and we will see you next week. We're out. Right. Thank you.